Sometimes you just need to get away to rejuvenate your mind, body, and soul. So oftentimes you may check into a hotel and change your scenery. But if you're like me, you may look around your room and wonder, what's the history? Who has stayed here before me? What is their life story? But what if the place you are staying was filled with dark and tragic history? Would you be able to rest comfortably knowing that the very room you are staying in was actually the area where someone died in a horrific manner? This is a story not made for the Hollywood screen, but really happened in the hills of the Ozarks. This place is called the Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs, Arkansas. I'm your host, Tiffany Taylor, and this is another episode of Shadows in History. The Crescent Hotel officially opened on May 20th, 1886. The Eureka Springs Times Echo called it, quote, America's most luxurious resort hotel, end quote. Offering airy rooms and beautiful furniture and a dining room that offered to seat 500 people, it quickly became a place for the rich and famous. Many people flocked to the hotel to enjoy the supposed healing waters of the springs that were offered there. But the excitement quickly faded. After the turn of the century, people began to realize that the supposed healing waters didn't have the curated powers that the hotel and the city were known for. Little by little, people stopped coming to the resort. In 1908, the now-closed hotel reopened as the Crescent College and Conservatory for Young Women, but continued to work as a sort of resort in the summers. However, after 16 years, the revenues from the tuition and summer guests was not high enough to maintain the cost of running the large building and the women's college closed. After sitting abandoned for the next six years, it briefly reopened as a junior college from 1930 to 1934. In 1937, a man by the name of Norman Baker reopened the building as a cancer hospital, promising to all who came that he would cure any cancer they had. He advertised miracle cures that neither needed surgery or painful tests. Baker alleged that any who came for a period of time would walk away cancer-free. Unsurprisingly, many people from all over the country flocked to the resort, hoping to be cured from the awful disease. But Baker was a con man. He had neither medical experience or license to help people dying of cancer. His supposed cure-all shots were filled with watermelon, carbolic acid, clover, and corn silk. No one was ever cured. While operating the hospital, Baker was being investigated by federal authorities and in 1939 was arrested for mail fraud. One U.S. Postal Inspector estimated that Baker had made as much as $500,000 per year selling his miracle elixirs through the mail while in Eureka Springs. Baker was sentenced to four years in prison. The investigation revealed that over the years that Baker ran the cancer facility, he defrauded cancer patients out of approximately $4 million. While no one actually died from Baker's supposed cure, the investigation showed that his treatment likely hastened the death of those suffering from cancer when they didn't receive effective forms of treatment. In 1944, Baker was released from prison where he then moved to Florida and he stayed there until he died in 1958 of, get this, cancer. Over the next several years, the hotel had been passed from hand to hand, promising to restore it to its former beauty. That didn't really happen until 1997 when Marty and Elise Roenick purchased the property. On May 1997, the Roenicks announced that, in quote, five years, we pledged to have this grand lady of the Ozarks back to where she was 100 years ago, end quote. But the people in the city were skeptical hearing this many times in the previous years before. But the Roenicks stayed true to their statement. 
and on September 6, 2002, the hotel reopened, fully restored to its original glory. There are hundreds of reports of ghostly encounters at the Crescent Hotel that have spanned over the years, one of which is that of Michael. Michael was a stonemasonry who worked on the hotel when it was originally built in 1885. It is reported that Michael was working on the roof one day and saw a pretty woman walking by below. He supposedly called to the woman, but lost his balance and fell to his death on a beam. That beam is still there, supporting the room 218. This is reportedly the most haunted guest room in the hotel. Michael is a mischievous spirit who likes to play tricks with the lights, the doors, and television, as well as pounding on the walls. Others have witnessed hands coming out of the bathroom mirror and heard cries like that of a man falling in the ceiling. Guests have also been shaken in the night which left one guest running and screaming through the halls, claiming to have seen blood on the walls. One of the other reports is that of a nurse all in white who pushes a gurney in the halls of the third floor. She is only spotted after 11 o'clock p.m., the time which they used to move the deceased cancer patients out of the hospital. Once she reaches the end of the hallway, she vanishes. The spirit of Dr. Baker is also reported. He has been reported being seen in the basement wearing a purple shirt and a white linen suit, looking around somewhat confused and lost. Some say the spirit is identical to the old photographs of the quack doctor. Another spirit that is reported is that of Theodora. Theodora is often seen by housekeepers in room 419. Theodora introduces herself, politely, as a cancer patient before vanishing completely. One other often reported spirit is that of a young girl who attended the Crescent College and Conservatory for Women, which was open from 1908 to 1924. According to the tale, the young lady jumped from, or was pushed, from a balcony to her death. A autopsy was done and the young lady was at the time with child. The college had a strict no boys rule and never found out who the father was. Today guests report hearing screams as she falls and seeing a glowing mist on the spot where she fell. There are countless other reports about spirits at the Crescent Hotel but with a spot so rich in history of swapping hands, it's no wonder that there's some tragic tales along the way. The Crescent Hotel in Eureka Springs, Arkansas is still open, and if you don't mind hearing bumps in the night or seeing spirits of the past, you too can stay here for a night and find out for yourself the rich history of the Crescent Hotel. That's all for today's episode of Shadows in History. I'm your host, Tiffany Taylor. Please be sure to follow and subscribe, and tune in next week for another chilling episode of Shadows in History. <laughs>